What's happening guys? Welcome into today's lesson. My name is Dave Major and today I'm gonna to show you five tips for playing quietly on the drums. Now let's get real for a minute. We've all been in a rehearsal room, in our practice space or at a gig and been told to play quieter. Can you please turn down? Can you shut up? Can you just turn your drums down for a minute? Let's, let's not pretend anything else. It sucks to be asked to play quietly. Drums sound awesome, both quiet and loud, but they're really fun to play loud. However, sometimes we're just gonna bite that bullet and play quietly. Maybe the song needs it, maybe the gig is too loud and boomy. Maybe we just need to practice a little bit quieter and not thrash the hell out of our drums. Okay, before we go any further, before I give you the tips, let's just talk about something that's really important. Can you hear the drums right now? No, the drums are not loud. The drums are quiet on their own. It's the player that's loud. And as a teacher and as a player myself, I want to be able to play all of the stuff that I can play at loud volumes, at soft volumes and vice versa. So practice your stuff quietly to loud. On the practice pad, practice your grooves soft to loud. That way you will have control over all the different dynamic levels and you won't be limited by your ability to play chops, grooves and all the things that you practice really hard. When you have to play quietly, you can't play any of that stuff. So now we've got that out of the way, tip number one is to add mass to your snare drum. Dampen down those overtones, control the vibration and the resonance of your drum and your volume will be reduced. You can start something small such as a wallet, you could add your phone, you could then add an O-ring, you could even just take an old head and cut it out. You can add a big fat snare drum or any other company, I'm sure other companies are available. You even go further, you could add a towel if you need to, fold that towel over. And then if you really, really, really need to play quietly, if you're playing in the tiniest, tiniest room, just chuck your practice pad on there. All those things will change the feel of the instrument and the feel of your snare drum. So you've got to watch that as well. And you've got to adjust your technique and make sure you're practicing rudiments and grooves on non-rebounding surfaces as well. But with a bit of practice, you should be able to sort of adjust as you go. Editor Dave here. As I'm going through this video, I just received an email from Ben at Evans, who's the product specialist in the UK. So he's saying that the extra mass does dampen the head, very obviously but also lowers the fundamental frequency because of the way our ears work, um, ranging from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz, the lower the note, the slower the sound waves and the less responsive our ear is. So if you had a frequency in, he says, between 1,000 and 5,000 hertz or so a sound at the same intensity as one below that, our ear would perceive the lower pitched one as quieter, even though they're not actually any quieter. So if you're adding mass, or you even detune your drums, you might end up being a little bit quieter. Anyway, back to the video. So now tip number two is to lower your snare drum. Not in pitch and detune it, but to physically lower it. What this will do is it will avoid the temptation to hit your rim shots because your snare drum is gonna be the loudest part of your, your drum kit. And if you like to hit rim shots like I do, they can kind of get out of control and they can be too much for a lot of situations. So lowering the snare drum will mean that it's really, really impossible for you to play 
a rim shot and therefore you're going to get more of a full snare drum tone. Now not only is this a good thing for when you're playing quiet gigs or rehearsals or even in your practice room, but it's a really cool musical idea in a session. So let's say you're doing a kind of a vintage style, maybe you're playing some soul, some R&B, you know, like a 12-8 Ray Charlesy kind of thing. They didn't really have rim shots in those days. They hit them, you know, like every now and then there'll be a rim shot, maybe in a fill, but they were saved for big moments because the microphones couldn't actually handle the sound pressure of that constantly throughout um, the recording for the song. So it would be a stylistic choice on top of a volume choice. So just lower it down half an inch, avoid that rim shot. If you're already sitting really low and your snare is really low, then sit a little bit higher maybe. And that'll allow you to just play a more controlled snare drum sound. Okay, tip number three, it's all to do with our hands and all to do with our sticks. And we're gonna hold the sticks a little bit higher. Now what this does is it puts a lot of the weight at the back of the stick, which means they're gonna rebound a lot further and quicker off, but it's actually harder for you to throw it down, which means instead you're not having as much mass traveling through the air and hitting your hi-hats, your cymbals, your toms. I think there's something to be said as well for the fact that you've got more mass and weight at the back and you're sort of dampening the stick a little bit so it kind of gets a more choke sound as well. But don't quote me on that because I am not a drum physicist at all. You can obviously, that's gonna change the way that you play and it's gonna change the feel. So you can actually practice, this is an old Mike Johnson exercise that I saw him do. And it's just to play, you know, a straight groove like and start to shimmy your way up the sticks and back down again. You'll actually hear the difference in volume. Okay, tip number four is similar to tip number one, and that is to actually put an upside down head on your floor tom. This is an old trick. This is like pre big fat snare drum stuff. Um, put an old head on your snare drum. It dampens it right down. However, on the floor tom, it's gonna dampen it down, cool, but it's gonna give you a really, really cool sub drop. Check this. And that's a sound choice as well. Obviously you're hitting the floor tom, you're getting a certain sound. It's also really good for controlling your volume. And I find that I have to do that if I'm playing in a venue that has a sound limiter where the power cuts in the band and basically I'm just sitting there playing on my own in the dark. Um, which is kind of what I do on a daily basis anyway. Now tip number five is to change your sticks. Have in your stick bag, some different sized sticks for different situations. Now my default stick choice is a Vic Firth 55A wood tip, not endorsed. Perfect stick for me, slightly bigger than a, a 5A, slightly smaller than a 5B, fit my hands perfectly. That's kind of my default, my go-to, my home base. But in my stick bag, I usually have some 5Bs as well, and I usually have some lighter sticks. Now, if you're a hickory player, most, most sticks are made of hickory, lighter than that would be maple and you can go to Sugar Maple, um, Vator do that, Promark do a similar thing, and Vic Firth do a maple stick. You, if you're an oak player, then drop down to Hickory. If you're a maple player, play with some chopsticks. You can also change the size of your stick. So if you play 5B, drop to a 5A or 7A. If you play a 5A, drop to even lower than a 7A, whatever that is. Now I actually have in my stick bag a really old used pair of Vic Firth SD4s. 
and they are the smallest possible stick I could find. Now they're really, really light because they're made of sugar maple and the bead is like microscopic. For a situation where I'm playing in a two piece or I'm playing really, really low volume stuff and I've done like full, you know, groove based gigs with this, just low volume, they work perfectly. So having that array of sticks and that choice when you're playing and in a session and in a gig really helps you cater your playing and cater your sound to the venue and the style and the band that you're playing with. Okay guys, that'll do for today. I'd love to know what you think and what your tips for playing quietly are. So leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, hit subscribe, hit like. It really honestly does help. It helps more people see these videos, helps the channel grow. But until next time, I'll catch you later. And remember, always wear your plugs.